Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Kyrie Irving being uneligible to practice or play for the Brooklyn Nets this upcoming season. But before we hop into all that, got to give a quick shout out to a subscriber today, as always. And today, it's going to be King Wiley. Thank you, bro, so much for like, comment, subscribing, turn on post notification, and just showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, I know you guys have heard the news as of right now that Sean Marks announced that Kyrie Irving, he's not going to be able to practice or play for the Brooklyn Nets until he complies with New York's virus guidelines, obviously. Now, with Kyrie Irving being unvaccinated, he's only going to be eligible to play away games. And I, as we all know, there's only 41 away games in an NBA season. And that thoroughly means that not only he's he's not going to be able to play in home games for the regular season, but he's also won't be available for the postseason. And with all that being said, when you're dealing with a roster that, you know, isn't as familiar with everyone as you would like it to be you definitely need your key acquisitions in Kyrie Irving to be available not to mention you you have a second year head coach in Steve Nash who's still trying to figure out how he can you know build this team into a championship roster and ultimately for the most part Sean Marks and the rest of the front office they've done a phenomenal job of doing so but I think with Kyrie Irving being a part-time player wouldn't be as beneficial for the Brooklyn Nets as a lot of people made it seem like it would be now with all that being said he could hurt a lot of you know the chemistry in the locker room and especially even on the court i mean when you have a guy like Kyrie irvin who is not as ball dominant as he was in years past but you know is definitely going to take up a a percentage of the offensive load and then you you're going to have him going in and out of lineups i think that can affect the overall dynamic of the brooklyn nets and that ultimately ended up leading to sean marks making this decision and he obviously he ran it by his two best players james harden and kevin durant this morning in their meeting and they are ultimately able to come up with this conclusion but i think i feel like this could lead to kyrie irving's retirement but i mean greg what are your thoughts on this entire situation no i totally agree with you i the 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 sound of you saying part-time players just funny to me because it's like you are right like he would only play essentially in 29 games that's 35 percent of the season and that's just crazy to me to even say that but it's true it's like it's a tough decision that he a tough decision to get you know to get vaccinated but you know when you're when you're in an organization they're paying you this is your job they're liable of you you got you know sometimes you have to make the sacrifices and do it to you know for the team and i agree with you if he's in and out of the lineup and they're trying to create chemistry he's going to mess it up a lot and i think this is the uh, this is the best decision for the nets going forward i think they need to focus on i mean the season's right around the corner it's a week away like he's they had to make this decision and not telling him like we don't want you around our organization right now it, it's 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 important and especially what happened last year where he I mean he left and didn't contact anybody didn't didn't contact steve nash or anybody on the team um when he left and then just kind of came back um with no explanation it was just it was just kind of weird and they were already you know mad at him and kind of just on edge about that already so to be another to have another distraction already going into the season it just doesn't look good on Kyrie. it doesn't look good on the franchise especially when they're trying to win championships and bring a championship to brooklyn so and i think i think with the pieces that they brought in i think i think they're going to be good i think i think people need to look out for this nets team for real because i think the drafting of cam thomas and what we've seen in the preseason he can really they can plug him in right away he can really get buckets and really feed off of you know the matchups that katie and harden get so i think i think the acquisitions that they have having Kyrie in and out of the lineup will definitely hurt some of those new guys that they brought in yeah but i mean i want to go back to my comments about him potentially retiring because i feel yeah. like this scenario right here will definitely make Kyrie Irving retire because I can't yeah, me too. I, agree. I cannot really see a situation where Kyrie Irving would end up you know just having a change of heart and getting vaccinated um but the reason why I say that I feel like he would retire other than that reason is ultimately because we know Kyrie Irving he doesn't want to play for any other franchise he essentially has no trade value at this point given the fact that he's already unvaccinated and then you know there, there's a lot that comes with Kyrie Irving he's going to be a big distraction so I can't see any contending teams wanting you know give up 
any valuable assets in return for a Kyrie Irving, especially when you know that it's not a sure thing that it could end up working. Um, we've seen examples like in Boston where, you know, Kyrie Irving uh, was, you know, acquired for Isaiah Thomas and I believe some other draft picks and everything. I can't remember off the top of my head as of right now, but I mean, Kyrie Irving, he, he just, there's a lot that comes with this guy. And I feel like, you know, with him essentially having no trade value and him not being eligible to play for the team that he wants to play for right now, I think that ultimately right there leads to his retirement. But I mean, what's your opinion on that specifically? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. No GM's going to want that. No one's, no GM's going to want that. And it's unfortunate because he had a good season last year. 50, 40, 90 club was really produced a lot on the court. Um, but, you know, just off court distractions just ruins everything. Like they're just going to it's going to turn GM's off. They, they're not going to want you. If you can't be competent on if you can't be confident, competent on, off the court, then they're not going to want you. And yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I think things going to hurt the Nets going forward. And that's why they had to make this move um for this team yeah and i applaud sean march for making this move i mean i think it was the right decision overall i mean you like we said earlier we don't believe that you know kyrie irving is worth you know just being a part-time player for this brooklyn nets organization i mean when you're locked in on a championship you have to make sure that you guys can build from day one and so on and so forth heading into the postseason but i mean obviously with cam thomas being drafted like you mentioned earlier i think yeah. he was insurance for kyrie irving potentially not being available for the brooklyn nets this season whether it was you know for lack of vaccination reasons um an injury or similar to last season like personal reasons i think the addition of cam thomas kind of you know makes brooklyn feel a little bit better about themselves heading into this year because i mean essentially he's going to be playing in a in a similar role to kyrie irving we know kyrie irving like you mentioned coming off of 50 40 90 season average 27 points per game six assists per game as well um but cam thomas this is a guy that can also fill it up in the scoring column you know he's a, a player that you know averaged 23 points per game at lsu um in a postseason i feel like he's going to be really good for the brooklyn nets given yeah. the fact that kevin durant and james harden they're going to cause so much attraction from the defense that it's going to allow Cam Thomas to get, you know, better opportunities to score the basketball. And ultimately, he could be efficient from that standpoint as well. So, I mean, I think with all that being said, this is a crazy situation. But you guys let us know what y'all think about this entire scenario in the comment section. Will Kyrie Irving ultimately end up retiring? Does he get vaccinated? Does he have a change of heart? You guys let us know. But thank you so much for tuning in to another episode with me and Greg on the Ball Fake Podcast. We greatly appreciate the love and support that we've been getting as of late. If you're new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.